In this video, we're going to be going over the best and the worst units within Clash Mini after the update. So I will have some gameplay going over on the side, but let's dive in to our tier list. Kicking things off, we have the Barbarian. Didn't get a great remodel and didn't get great changes with the update. So Barbarian is probably the worst mini within Clash Mini right now. Then I'm going to throw the Lumberjack in the D tier and also the Battle Healer and the Wizard. I think these four units just are not that viable right now. Lumberjack, maybe in like very, very few situations. Battle Healer feels like she fell off pretty hard. Uh, she just doesn't really work with much right now. Uh, and then Wizard really doesn't do anything. Um, he has that anti-heal, but heal's not super in the meta right now. So I feel like Wizard just really isn't there yet. And maybe he just hasn't found his place in the meta as it hasn't even been a week yet. But this is just like preliminary findings. Then in the C tier, we're going to go with the Archer, the Dart Goblin, and the Witch. And I have a few more, but I want to talk about these three first. So these three units are pretty situational. Witch is very strong against Monk because of the skeleton spawning in. And also her new third ability where the skeleton side they get plus one attack or they grant plus one attacks for six seconds uh not stackable i think the witch is in an interesting spot where she's like extremely situational not super and she's also four elixir so like there are better four elixir minis she is pro she's the second worst four elixir mini in the game behind the battle healer uh and then also in the c tier i'm gonna go with the pekka the fisherman the healing ranger and the golden giant i'm putting the golden giant at the top of the c tier but yeah he's pretty good he's in a lot of decks but honestly he i think there are better three elixir options that currently synergize and golden giant doesn't really fit into the current meta at least that we're seeing right now it's not that he's a bad unit i've honestly kind of questioning putting him in the c tier myself if anything he would just be in the b tier so he's like borderline c b tier uh let me know what you think of that down in the comment section below and then in the b tier at the bottom of the b tier we're gonna go with the valkyrie we're gonna go with the knight we're gonna go with the musketeer we'll go with the bandit as well so i think putting these four kind of at the bottom of the b tier uh they're pretty good they're not great valkyrie um not super great she's kind of like interchangeable with the golden giant in my opinion where like each of them could be bc tier um but i think a lot of people are kind of sleeping on valk a little bit um she's really good against royal ghost because obviously if there's anything next to the royal ghost the valkyrie will be able to get the splash damage onto the royal ghost so valkyrie is useful in that sense um, but I think I still think there's something off about her something else that she needs to kind of push her into meta relevancy But right now she's like extremely situational She's kind of really only good against the royal ghost and then for the rest of the B tier We're gonna round it out with the guard the spear goblin the bowler and the giant skeleton I think these four units are really good. They're like top B tier We're seeing a lot of these units in a lot of different decks and I think it's pretty easy to say that these are top tier b tier minis and then even bandit she really only synergizes right now with wave master being launched over to the other side and getting that energy buff um but i think a lot of these units within the b tier are pretty good within the meta and you can't really go wrong if you have any of these in your deck um whereas in the c tier for example there are certain minis that you probably want to pick in the b tier over minis in the c tier and then for the a tier uh i I'm honestly struggling to find an order to put these units in, but I'm just gonna throw all the minis out that I think are in the A tier. We have the Electro Wizard, we have the Ice Wizard, we have the Magic Archer, we have the Mega Knight, we have the Miner, we have the Mini Pekka, and we have the Prince. I think all of these units are really, really solid right now. E-Wiz has an insane amount of stun. Ice Wiz has an insane amount of control, plus its third star ability is really good against Clash. Magic Archer does a huge amount of damage, and when it's approached by a Royal Ghost, if it's able to get its triple shot off, it'll deal a ton of damage to the Royal Ghost. Mega Knight is just insane with 100 HP, plus with the shield buff, it can also tank a Monk Punch, and just the stun and area control that you get from the Mega Knight is insanely valuable. The backstab, the cleave, and the dissipate onto the Miner at the back line against World Champions, against Archer Queens, against Electro Wizards, it works so well. Miner is almost a must-have two elixir mini next to the Ice Wiz. Miner is probably interchangeable, but Miner is a great mini to have just because of its kit. The mini Pekka with the insane amount of control that it can provide in terms of dissipate, but then also when you pair it with a Mega Knight with an Electro Wizard, it has that two times critical damage, which is massive when a unit is stunned. So mini Pekka is a great mini. And then the Prince is crazy right now. The displacement that it can take with the Prince 
Prince charts. If you put it on a Mega Knight, you can launch the Mega Knight to the back line. The KO with the Pony in Frenzy right now, it just infinitely stuns. Prince is very good. All of these minis within the A tier are insanely good right now. And then of course, there are two minis that are missing and I'm sure you guessed it. Yeah, we're gonna have the Swordsman and the Royal Ghost in the S tier. These two minis are absolutely insane right now. The Swordsman has so much control. It has the boast for the max energy, so whenever it gets a kill, it's gonna get it super again. It can deal 40 damage with its super, which is a ton of damage, and if it's able to focus onto one target, then it is pretty much going to take it down nine times out of 10, or just leave it with 10 HP or less. Uh, the Swordsman is really good right now, and then of course, everybody knows what's going on with the Royal Ghost. Now, it's not to say that these two units aren't actually counterable within the game. Um, Obviously, the counters to them are, well, themselves, but then also the control that you can get, and depending on the heroes that you have, there's a lot of situations where these minis are able to be taken down, but these are definitely the best two minis in the game. And now we're going to be going to the heroes in the D tier, Shield Maiden. She is by far the absolute worst hero within the game. There's no question about it. She fell off super hard right now. If she gets stunned, her shield goes away. I I don't really know what else can be done for the Shield Maiden, but right now she is just terrible. If you have found a Shield Maiden deck that actually works, I would love to see it, so let me know down in the comment section below. And in the C tier, we have the Natureborn and the Barbarian King. I think these two are kind of interchangeable. It's not that they're bad. There are certain decks that they just work well with, like obviously Natureborn with Witch, with E-Wiz, with Ice Wiz, with Mega Knight. Like obviously paired with the right minis, Natureborn can still work in the current meta, um, but she's not that great. And then kind of same thing with the Barbarian King. There are certain minis that he does pair well with, but I think overall there are better heroes within the game and these heroes aren't going to get you consistent wins like other heroes within the meta and then in the b tier i'm going to be throwing in the archer queen i think the archer queen is really the only hero within the b tier right now um she's either really good or really bad but also she has this kind of like middle ground where like in a lot of matchups she will just be able to win in other matchups she just loses quite a bit obviously her strongest counter is the mega knight uh because of the area of control that it has so with mega knight being meta i can't really put archer queen in a higher tier it's not that archer queen herself is bad or the kit that she has is bad it's just that her counters are more relevant in the meta right now than she is so she kind of falls into that b tier category and then in the a tier i'm going to be going with the monk the grand warden and the wave master i think these these three heroes are still really good but there are again three other heroes that I'm sure you guys know that uh, will be going in the S tier and that is going to be the Royal Champion the Skeleton King and the Countess unfortunately Countess it does have a bug right now where it's only available for gems but the team is working on getting her back in the shop for crystal coins and once she's back in the shop for crystal coins then i will cover decks for her uh, on the channel but in the meantime i don't really want to be promoting countess and telling new players countess is the best hero because she's not obtainable as a free-to-play player and she should be obtainable and she will be obtainable as a free-to-play player in the future so i don't want to be promoting countess right now on the channel but i do think countess is probably the best hero within the game a lot of the tiles uh in the minis that she pairs really well with are just make her so much stronger so i think this like group of six right here even these three in the a tier like you can really not go wrong with it like any of these heroes can probably beat each other uh in most matchups and it really comes down to just placement obviously we're still learning the game we're still adapting to the game but I do think that uh, these six heroes are definitely top tier. And it was honestly kind of challenging to kind of figure out what do I put in A tier, what do I put in S tier. But man, the, if, if you play any of the six heroes within the S and A tier, there's a good chance you're probably going to be able to win regardless if you have like Monk versus Countess or Monk versus, you know, like you can still win. It really just comes down to placement. And then just as a bonus, we don't have Pink Fury and Dar uh, Dagger Goblin available yet, but I am going to throw them based on my perception of playing them within the developer build and the stats that we saw. Obviously, the, those stats that were shown in those videos are subject to change, so just keep that in mind. But I think I'm going to be putting the Dagger Goblin in in the C tier if he doesn't change. I really don't think he's that good. Um, a lot of people are thinking he's gonna be really good, but his, his kit's just kind of weird. Um, it doesn't really make too much sense as like investing elixir into him. I think, uh, I think investing into a miner or investing into an ice wizard or even a guard um, or knight 
as a two elixir mini is a lot more valuable within the current meta. So unless Dark Dagger Goblin gets changed, I'm gonna throw him in C tier. I really just don't think he's gonna be that viable. And then we're gonna be putting Pink Fury in the B tier. I think Pink Fury is gonna be a super high skill cap mini. And the reason I say that is because she relies solely on the amount of elixir that you have. So what it's gonna come down to is elixir management. Right now, there is no like elixir mini or hero that's like pink fury where you need to have elixir in your reserve to actually make her better so it's really going to come down to the meta that is at the time when in september when she gets released in the mini pass but honestly i think pink fury is a super super high skill cap hero because of the fact that you can't just dump all your elixir on the board you actually have to maintain your elixir so i think she's going to be super high skill cap like i think she'll still be decent but i don't think she's going to be op or anything like that so in their current state again this is where i see dagger goblin and pink fury sitting let me know what you think of this tier list down in the comment section below hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell so you don't miss any more videos